So I think with that, we'll get started. We'll have Lynn Mackle come up and tell us about um, 101 Quincy co-working in, here in Hancock. So come on up. switch it up. Okay, great. Well, while he's doing that, I'll take an extra moment to, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, take an extra moment to uh, warn you all, especially the new people. Um, this is only my third time attending One Million Cups, so all of you new people have to present in three months. So <laughs> just get ready. <laughs> Very excited about uh, being here today. Thank you all. It's so nice to see so many friendly faces in the audience, um, and really looking forward to, to sharing my idea and uh, our idea. So, we're here to tell you about 101 Quincy Coworking. I'm going to give you a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. Um, just a quick background on my story and what led me here to be um, on the stage with you all today. Uh, tell you a little bit about coworking, because it is a concept that I think um, can be interpreted in a lot of ways. So we'll quickly review that. And then we'll talk about the details, because um, as Jason mentioned, uh, 101 is both an idea and a business opening very soon. So we're interested in gathering all of your feedback um, and understanding what the community thinks about our, our idea. So a little, about, a little bit about me, um, I'm Lynn, and I have lived in the Keweenaw for a long time uh, prior to moving out west. So I've lived in, I've called many states home essentially, and note that I have um, noted the Upper Peninsula as a separate state, because sometimes, you know, you just gotta put that out there. I think it warrants its own state sometimes. Uh, but I've also uh, lived in those places while living and working at great places, and I've had the opportunity um, to build my career while uh, moving out west and, and finding more opportunities. So um, it's been a, a really interesting ride for me after graduating from tech um, and working in the local area for a while and then looking for, for an opportunity uh, to expand and grow my work skills. And what I learned while um, being able to live here for so many years and then also being able to move out west and um, expand my career was that I really, really love living here, but I have a lot of career ties and opportunities in the cities. Um, I think that that's a, a situation that might um, be a, the case for a lot of tech graduates. Uh, so when the opportunity came, essentially, for us to move back, um, I was really excited because I uh, had a great feeling about the q and I call it home, but I was a little worried about what, what was going to happen to my career that I had built, what was I going to do with all these skills, you know, how was I going to apply them without a job um, that, I, that I knew that I could come back with. Um, and as luck would have it for me, um, the opportunity knocked, we answered. Uh, we applied for our Uber card, thank you all for granting it. <laughs> and um, after that, I was able to find an awesome remote job. So I was like 100%, I'm set, this is awesome. Uh, I'm just gonna call this a win. This is gonna be me for the rest of my life, working at my awesome remote job with my dogs on either side. Everything is great. But what I didn't realize was that there was a lot more that goes into working remotely, setting up a home office, having to figure out um, Wi-Fi. I, I, I live so far out of town that I had to get two Wi-Fi providers just to make sure that I had reliable coverage. Um, I had to get a phone because my cell phone doesn't really work out where I live now. So there was a lot of things that were happening that made working remotely more challenging than I had anticipated. Uh, I needed a printer, I needed a whiteboard, let alone having people to brainstorm with. Um, and eventually I found myself uh, finding ads like this online, uh, 10 ways to make working from home less lonely. So I knew that there was something missing in my work-life balance and that I really benefited from having the, the time with my coworkers just to be able to talk and chit-chat and understand uh, what's going on and, and you know, just having that personal connection. Uh, and while I found that job that I was looking for, there was still something missing. Uh, and luckily, it wasn't, I had been talking about this with a, with a few people locally, um, and I was introduced to Jake Northey, uh, who's sitting here and many of you may know and recognize from the last One Million Cups presentation. Um, and we both had, a, I guess, a series of events that led us to be in a similar place, uh, looking for an office, or looking for a job, or sorry, having a job, but looking for an office, in need of an office. And we both share a passionate love for the Keep It On. Um, and it was really funny because we only met two months ago, and we uh, have both been here quite a while, we spent a significant portion of our lives in the Keweenaw, and we've both been in different circles. Um, and it's been great to, to grow and meet and find out that we have all these connections that we didn't even know about, and we also have a, a shared common vision, um, and that's what I'm here to talk to you more about today. 
Um, and quickly moving into the, the concept of co-working, because I know I've, I'm on that time limit because I got the eyes from Jason a few minutes ago. Um, co-working is really a shared working space for people with independent objectives. And you see the types of people that might be uh, interested in a co-working space below, but it's not limited to those. It's just a selection, remote workers, um, solopreneurs, creative thinkers, people that just want a shared office space that has Wi-Fi, a phone, and all those necessary things that you need in order to work in today's technologically advanced society. So what might that look like? Well, shared office space, lots of places for collaboration um, and inspiration, shared seating, um, and that's just a, a quick example. There's many out there, and that's more about what we're looking to do. Um, one more definition of, of co-working versus the traditional office space. Um, you see here in the traditional office, you've got two businesses. Uh, they've got individual offices, uh, kitchenettes by office, a conference room for each space, separate Wi-Fi, separate coffee, all of that's uh, kept separate. We're in the co-working space, open desks, floating seating, uh, casual seating perhaps, uh, sharing a conference room and sharing kitchen resources. And a quick uh, look at co-working and where that's been. It's not a new concept. Um, it's about 13 years old, started in 2005 in San Francisco, and since then has grown exponentially. Uh, there's about 14,000 co-working spaces around the world today. Uh, we have got some cool stats, um, hopefully not fake news, I did do a little bit of fact checking on this, uh, but people that have been surveyed working in co-working space, 84% of them uh, tend to be more engaged and motivated, and 89% uh, report being happier by having a co-working space as opposed to either working out of their homes or working in private offices. And uh, why now? Why in the Kiwana? Why now? As I mentioned, um, it's been a quick sequence of events that have gotten us to this point. And, um, I'm not going to hit on each of these, but moving back, um, figuring out that I was needing a space like this, uh, meeting Jake, and, and also having uh, Jake was already in the process of setting up an informal uh, co-working space and was just trying to define how it might all work. Uh, and as luck would have it, Jake and I met in April of 2018. We found out uh, that we had access to the second floor of 101 Quincy, uh, which is an amazing building in downtown, which I'm excited to tell you about. Um, where am I at, Jason? Time? You're at six minutes. Okay, I'm gonna blast. You're doing great, keep going. Okay, yeah. thanks, gang. <laughs> um, so one other thing that I thought was really interesting, I moved back in August. Since then, I know 10 people of my personal friends that have moved back to the Keweenaw. Only half of them have jobs that require, that have a shared office or that have any office space. So 50% of them have local jobs and 50% of them have brought something with them. And they need a space like this. And they're excited about this idea and there's been a great energy around uh, the people that we've talked to that are interested in having a shared space. So not to go too deep into the, the details because the 101 Quincy history deserves a presentation of its own. Uh, but this amazing building is, is the, really the cornerstone and the foundation of Hancock as you turn into the bridge and start to understand um, downtown. And, and it was that uh, a long time ago when the miners first came and, and everyone was um, really settling in the area. And the building was first uh, put together in 1888 and it was originally the first national bank. Notice it has two stories instead of three like today. And it's gone through a few renovations that have expanded and grown. Uh, and most recently in 1970s, there was a large interior remodel and update, which we are now making look a little more like uh, the, uh, the old days. So it's being restored to its original heritage. And that's a really exciting thing that I think is uh, gonna be fun to see over the next few years. And today, what do we know about 101 Quincy? Well, it's perfectly located. There's public parking, uh, renovations in progress uh, happening now. I, I, there's contractors there working on this. We had a new window installed yesterday to bring in more natural light to the second floor. Uh, we're centrally located with three great eateries, Casey Bonkers, Millie's Pizza, and the Cantina Restaurant. Uh, and it's now the home to 101 Quincy Coworking. But at the end of the day, you know, in addition to being in a great building, we also want to build a community. People that are collaborators, they're inspired thinkers, they're, uh, they've got energy and they just need a place to go to, to be with other people and um, do an independent activity, but be in a shared space and benefit from uh, that chit chat, that time that we need to brainstorm and build ideas. So diving into uh, a few more details about 101 and how it's set up or will be set up as we launch the end of the month. Um, it's going to be membership 
make based. Uh, it's pay by month and contract free for the reserved and floating spaces. We've got four main tiers here. Um, yeah, reserved and floating. So reserved means you have a desk that you can come to every day um, and sit there and, and um, that is your space. Floating means you have access to any of the shared working spaces, high tables, bar tops, um, conference tables, and uh, these are the, the largest cost and they kind of assume that someone would be there full time. Uh, a light membership would be someone working that just wants a break from home or maybe they've got another office and they want just to change locations and seek other inspiration. Uh, and that'll be six days a month. There's also a community member, uh, which is three days a month, not up there. Um, and there's, you can see quickly uh, the benefits of each. Space and access 24-7 with some of the full-time members. There's an eight to five stipulation with some of the other packages. Free coffee and snacks all day, uh, as much as you want. Access to Wi-Fi. We'll be running some events and every membership option will have access to those events. Uh, we'll also have a reservable conference room, so if you need to book a space, um, have a meeting, you can uh, get a hold of that conference room if you have one of the advanced memberships, or if you talk to Jake and I, we might make that work. Anyway, uh, and also lockable storage. So these are the types of services and membership uh, packages that we'll have to start. We'll also be hosting a couple of events, uh, Q22, which is uh, the time of the clock where the clock looks the most like a Q. And that'll be a networking happy hour um, with beverages and fun every Friday at 422. And uh, we're also going to have a, a few uh, developing events, a minimum viable topics. It's kind of like an agile methodology of what do I need to know to get started on something that I'm interested in. And then a deep dive of TMI, too much information. So that's going to give you a, a lot of depth and a breadth of um, a topic that you're interested in. And these are going to be driven by member need. So uh, they won't be more general, they'll probably be focused. Um, how do I do a targeted Facebook campaign in Milwaukee or something like that? Um, very um, specific in their topics. Uh, and those will be open to the members and if you're a community member, you can also drop in on those particular dates. So by the numbers, what do we need to be effective? Um, unlike some of the awesome tech startups in the area, we aren't looking to make a million dollars and you know, grow this into a multi-billion you know, enterprise. We just want to have this awesome space in the community. So we, we really don't need a lot um, to be uh, what we consider to be successful. Uh, currently, we have four members, uh, and that's kind of in an informal structure where they're, thank you for sticking with us, because we're moving into the new space and it's a little tumultuous right now. Um, but we need about 12 to break even on the investments of the furniture and, and um, to make our monthly rent payment and those pieces. And to hit a sustainable growth, we'd be looking at about 20 members. And that's um, mostly made up of the flexible and reserved uh, membership options that you saw um, a minute ago. And for about a year, sorry, to make those numbers work. And uh, what's the future vision look like? Uh, there's a pocket park right next to 101 Quincy, and we're going to have an outdoor workspace there. I'm um, assuming we get enough members to get that going this summer. We'll also be looking into expanding the shared spaces. Right now we have four rooms, and we'll be looking um, to make that larger within the building, and we've got space and great landlords to help us do that. Uh, and we'll also have some private offices. Some of these are available now, but those will be um, different than the fee structure you saw before, and probably based on the square footage size of the office. Uh, but you'll still have access to the Wi-Fi, the snacks, everything will still be in that shared capacity. And uh, wrapping up, one thing that I wanted to make everyone aware of is we have a launch party happening on May 30th. Um, hell or high water, we're going to get there and we're going to introduce you all to this awesome space. Uh, and you'll be able to come check it out, see what it's like, um, talk to Jake or I if you have any questions, and um, just get a feel for what it would be like to be in the co-working space at 101 Quincy. Uh, I've also got a few of these flyers to pass out, so if anyone wants one, feel free to um, come up to Jake or, and I, Jake or I after the presentation. And um, that's about it. Uh, the question I, that always happens at this uh, event is how can we help? So I kind of preempted that. And if you are interested in helping, um, in addition to the questions that you might have, uh, these are some ways that you can uh, support our cause. Help us by spreading the word, um, following us on Facebook. We also have a photo session coming up soon. We uh, have a lot of pictures of the building, but none of the actual finished space. So that'll be happening shortly, um, the week of May 20th, if anyone knows anyone that would be interested in being modeling uh, a model for our photo shoot. 
And then, uh, of course, sharing the details of the launch party and attending. We would love to see as many people on the 30th. Uh, it'll be open between 2 to 8 p.m., but uh, that's a pretty flexible time. You can probably stop by any time, but that'll be when you get all the good snacks. So, <laughs> thank you all for your attention today and my 13-minute, seven-minute presentation. <laughs> and happy to answer any questions that you have. Right now we're at four rooms. Um, square footage is probably like 1,500. Uh, yeah, uh, 1,500 to probably going to expand about 3,000 square feet on the floor. And that doesn't include some of the common spaces. So the kitchenette isn't included in there. We've got a, um, a dining area that is in there as well. Bathrooms aren't included in there. So that's just the physical rooms that people will have access to in the shared space. We can have shared printer, like a copier and things like that, and key cards to get in. Have you gone through all that? Yeah, so we will have um, a shared printer that isn't set up yet. Right now, the uh, building is accessed by Bluetooth, so we have an app that you download, you get access to it, so then a 24 hour member can come and go as they please. They just need to have the app on their phone. Um, it's both Android and iOS app, so it should be pretty easy. We'll be a crazy suggestion, but have you ever thought about uh, marketing your space? to seasonal people, uh, where they might say, you know what, we'd love to go up to the UP, but come November 1st, I want to be out of here. Uh, and try to attract, even to get a premium on, on the rental space, but the people that can work from home and who want to be in this environment for the good weather ones. I think that's a great recommendation. Um, I have a friend who has uh, said the exact same thing to me. I think there's a lot of tech alums that come up for a little while during the summer. They might be interested in extending their stay. Um, my particular friend lives in, her parents still live in Copper Harbor, so she comes up for like three months and she's said the same thing. There's, there's no Wi-Fi in Copper Harbor. You know, if I had a place to go, it'd be easier for me to extend my trip. That is a, a great suggestion and something that will um, continue to look at marketing and building out the website so that we are uh, optimized for search and, and also, you know, relying on uh, the group here to help us share that, that opportunity is available. Have you done any customer discovery to know you can attract 20 people in this area? You know, we haven't done a lot of market research um, outside of that uh, personal anecdote of 10 people moving back and, and about 50% of them need places. Uh, at the end of the day, I think Jake and I are, uh, are we're, we're good with our belief that we're going to have a really cool office space if nobody wants to come hang out with us. So, <laughs> no, no formal market research. Brent? Do you have the ability to advertise who your members are and what their corporate affiliations are? So when somebody signs up, they give you the permission to release who they work with? That's a great recommendation. That is actually in our contract. Um, sorry, Matt, if you didn't see that. Uh, but we'd like to have a directory of the members, and that's a, a pretty common practice for a lot of co-working spaces. Um, I know I moved through that slide pretty quick, uh, but there are a lot of co-working spaces in the Midwest, uh, multiple in Traverse City, multiple in the Green Bay, Appleton area, a lot in Ann Arbor and Detroit. So um, we've been looking at those websites and seeing the kind of uh, member directories that they have, and, and that is included. included. Their affiliation, usually their social profile links if you're willing to share like your LinkedIn profile. Um, and that that is all a request that we'll have for the members. Great recommendation. Yes? So I'm curious about the renovation. Um, when I, I, I've seen some of the renovation going on this week, but um, did you, did you, are, who were you working with and did you look at the space and decide to renovate it for the use? So in other words, is it, is it already historically, you know, if there's, when you update a, um, an older building, you want to keep the historical features intact, but you also want to make it nice so that you can use the space. How yes, great, you? great suggestion. I'm going to give this one to Jake. Um, okay, so the, the key with the renovation is we're trying to maintain historical accuracy. Um, so like Lynn said, in the 70s, there was kind of a go put up wood paneling and carpet and all sorts of stuff. We were storing the wood floors. Fortunately, we have um, a lot of the original trim on the third floor. So we're putting all the original trim from the building. The uh, building was built in the 1880s, so we're very fortunate to have that. It's, some of that's old growth. Um, yellow pine, which is just really hard to get now because, you know, they chop it all down. So like, uh, yeah, we're, we're basically trying to, to build it for the future, but also maintain that historical look and feel to the building. Anyone else? Yeah, I have a question. Um, 
you have some competition coming in Fulton. How are you going to deal with that? Um, uh, we don't see other spaces as competitors. Uh, actually, one of the things that we want to do is try to set up, like for instance, Ampersand Coworking in Marquette. We want to try to set up uh, agreements where members might be able to float between the different offices. Um, for us, it's really not about uh, you know trying to compete with others. It's more about just building a, a good environment that people want to be in. And then you know if we can set up agreements with those other spaces to allow for some floating in between, I think then everybody wins. Great, thank you all for being here.